very very glad to see you Brendan. Thank you. So um, the captain Jack, like and everybody is hot and everybody know really glad to, to see you here with this amazing character you reflect all the time. And uh, I'm happy what you said about Doha and how you feel in Doha. Yeah. Is Saudi Arabia poised to be the next big player in the global film industry? What's the link between Johnny Depp's newest directorial venture and the Red Sea Film Foundation? In addition, the foundation's recent investments shed light on an intriguing blend of Hollywood blockbusters and training opportunities for Saudi interns. This is not all. With collaborations spanning from Guy Ritchie's wartime rebels to Michael Mann's dive into Ferrari's past, the foundation is carving a distinctive space for itself. Also, stay tuned to discover Alice Cooper's unexpected comments on Depp's personal controversies. Can Saudi Arabia truly make its mark in Tinseltown? Let's delve deeper. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot to us. Thanks in advance! The Red Sea Film Foundation of Saudi Arabia has revealed its financial support for three major projects, Johnny Depp's Modi, Michael Mann's Ferrari set in Venice, and Guy Ritchie's action film The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare set during World War II. The organization, which oversees the Jeddah-based Red Sea International Film Festival, RSIFFF has provided backing for these movies via its Red Sea International Film Financing Division. This division had previously offered support to Ma Wen's Jean Du Barry, the opening film at Cannes 2023, marking its initial significant global co-production venture. While the exact investment amounts remain undisclosed, the foundation has shared that Modi will serve as a pilot for an innovative initiative. This initiative aims to involve Saudi Arabian interns in the production process, allowing them to receive practical training across different areas such as art, hammerwork, and production. These investments indicate Saudi Arabia's ongoing commitment to establish a significant presence in the global film industry, coinciding with its efforts to develop a thriving domestic film sector. This endeavor comes after the lifting of the 35-year cinema ban in 2017. RSIFF CEO Mohammed Al Turki stated that the Red Sea International Film Financing serves as a means for them to back renowned storytellers, accomplished directors, and facilitate the platform for cultural interchange. In the wake of our inaugural global co-production alongside Ma Wen's highly anticipated Cannes feature Jean Du Barry, we are truly thrilled to contribute to the premiere of Michael Mann's impactful cinematic endeavor, which delves into a significant year in Enzo Ferrari's life. Likewise, our enthusiasm runs high as we offer our support to Johnny Depp's intriguing depiction of the artist Modigliani's life and creative journey, marking Depp's return to the directorial realm. Moreover, we're excited to be part of Guy Ritchie's dynamic exploration of World War II rebels in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Modi signifies Johnny Depp's second directorial effort, following his 1997 film The Brave. As disclosed by Deadline in the previous year, the movie features Italian actor Riccardo Scamarcio portraying the painter and sculptor Amadeo Modiani in the lead role. The cast also includes the participation of Al Pacino, the film is derived from Dennis McIntyre's play titled Modigliani, which has been transformed into a screenplay by the writing duo Jersey and Mary Kromolowski. The fund, established in 2019 and responsible for backing a total of 170 films, has provided support for projects such as Tunisian director Mohamed Benatia's film Behind the Mountains in the Arisen Tea category. Additionally, it has contributed to the Moroccan film Backstage, directed by Afaf Ben Mahmoud and Khalil Ben Kiran. Furthermore, the fund is extending its support to three ventures that are partaking in the Final Cut program under the Venice Production Bridge Initiative, a festival component geared towards industry professionals. These projects include She Was Not Alone, Zion Music, and Allah Is Not Obliged. Now let's see what intriguing comment Alice Cooper made about Johnny Depp. After concluding a two-month tour alongside his fellow Hollywood Vampires band member, Johnny Depp, Alice Cooper reveals that they never engaged in discussions regarding Depp's highly publicized legal battle for defamation against his former wife, Amber Heard. I don't recall it ever coming up during the tour, because honestly, it wasn't a significant topic, Cooper shared in an interview with Vulture. I didn't follow the trials at all. It all seemed incredibly exaggerated. It had that Hollywood vibe. 
I had confidence Johnny would prevail, especially considering he had former partners testifying in his favor. It's not something you commonly witness. I switched my attention away from it and focused on the fact that on stage, he's our guitarist. In 2012, Cooper, along with Depp and Aerosmith guitarist Joe Perry, established Hollywood Vampires. Following the televised defamation trial, the band embarked on a tour across the United Kingdom and Europe from June to July of the subsequent year. When questioned about any reservations regarding including Depp on the tour due to the domestic abuse accusations, Cooper responded, Absolutely not. In conversations with Johnny about it, he viewed it as an event that occurred, Cooper noted. His response was more like, All right, got it. What's the next song? For Johnny, it seemed like one of those situations where I wouldn't say it was magnified, but I can't fathom why they would broadcast the whole trial, you know? It's due to the prominence of both individuals involved. Cooper also shared my most amusing suggestion regarding the entire situation was why not create a remake of War of the Roses starring Johnny and Amber. I mean, who wouldn't be curious about that? I'd definitely watch it. And to elevate the entertainment, let their lawyers be portrayed by Angie and Brad. All you need is a director with a great sense of humor, and that film would undoubtedly be a massive success. In June of 2022, a jury in Virginia ruled that Heard had engaged in defamation against Depp through a 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post, in which she indirectly referred to her previous allegations of domestic violence. The same jury also determined that Depp had defamed Hard in his efforts to counter her accusations. Depp received $10 million in compensatory damages and an additional $5 million in punitive damages, which were subsequently adjusted to a $350,000 as per the state's legal limit. Furthermore, the jury granted her $2 million in compensatory damages for her counterclaim. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time. See you soon.